Vulcan was one of the 20 superhuman Primarchs created by the Emperor of Mankind using his own altered DNA. As a perpetual, Vulcan possessed extraordinary regenerative abilities, allowing him to resurrect after any death, even from complete disintegration. This gift remained unknown to him until the Horus Heresy, when he survived an orbital atomic strike at the Drop Site Massacre on Isvan 5. Vulcan led the 18th Legion, originally called the Dragon Warriors, but later renamed the Salamanders, after the fire-resistant reptiles of his volcanic homeworld, Nocturne. This change honored a legendary contest between Vulcan and the Emperor, where slaying one of these beasts revealed the Emperor's identity and restored Vulcan to the Imperium. During the Great Crusade, Vulcan was known for his empathy toward average humans and his remarkable skill in crafting powerful technological items. After the Horus Heresy, he hid nine sacred artifacts across the galaxy, challenging his salamanders to find them as a test of their worthiness. He then vanished, leaving a prophecy that when all nine artifacts were found, he would return to lead his chapter in the Imperium's final days as foretold in the Promethean Cult's Tome of Fire. Welcome to Lion Drag, your forge of Warhammer 40k lore. Today we dive into the legendary tale of Primarch Vulcan, the indomitable leader of the Salamander's Legion. From his unbreakable will to his incredible journey through the fires of the Horus Heresy, this is a story of resilience, sacrifice and immortality. Stay tuned as we uncover the trials and triumphs of one of the Emperor's most steadfast sons. When the Emperor's Primarchs were scattered across the galaxy by the Chaos Gods, one of them, Vulcan, landed on the harsh dead world of Nocturne during a time of great turmoil known as the Time of Trial. The infant Vulcan fell like a blazing comet and was discovered by Embel, a blacksmith in the city of Hesiod. Recognizing the child as the prophesied savior foretold by the Promethean cult, and Bale named him Vulcan and raised him as his own. Vulcan grew rapidly, reaching full adulthood and becoming larger and more muscular than any man on Nocturne by the age of three. His intelligence matched his physical prowess, and he quickly improved the already skilled metalworking techniques of the Nocturian smiths. Embracing his new culture, Vulcan worked in his foster father's forge and hunted the planet's fearsome beast becoming a legendary champion in defending Nocturne against its many threats. The most dangerous of these threats were the Dusk Wraiths, vile Eldari slavers known as Drukari, who preyed on Nocturne's people for sport. During Vulcan's fourth year, these Drukari raiders attacked his town. While the town's people hid, as they usually did, Vulcan refused to cower. Armed with only blacksmith's hammers, he led the people in a counter-attack, slaying a hundred Drukari warriors single-handedly and driving them back. News of his victory spread across Nocturne, and the headsmen of the planet's seven most important settlements came to honor Vulcan. Inspired by his courage, they vowed to fight their enemies rather than hide from them. Vulcan's legend grew as tales of the fireborn warrior who tore slave barges from the sky and crushed Xenos invaders spread throughout the world. His superhuman strength and unyielding will made him a symbol of hope for the people of Nocturne. In the year 832 millennium 30, after Vulcan's victory over the Dark Elder, the people of Nocturne held a grand tournament to celebrate. The contests, tests of strength and craftsmanship were traditions among the Nocturians. During the opening ceremony, a mysterious stranger appeared. His pale skin and strange clothing set him apart from the dark-skinned and rugged people of Nocturne. The stranger confidently claimed he could best any man in the tournament, drawing laughter from the crowd at the thought of competing with the superhuman Vulcan. Amused by the challenge, Vulcan accepted, and the stranger wagered that the loser would swear eternal loyalty to the victor. For eight days, Vulcan and the stranger competed in numerous contests of strength and endurance, astonishing the spectators with their godlike abilities. Many events, such as holding anvils aloft for half a day, ended in ties as neither competitor showed signs of weakness. 
By the end of the tournament, they were still tied, and the elders of Nocturne declared that the final challenge would be a salamander hunt. The contestant who forged the most powerful weapon and slew the largest salamander would be the winner. In this final trial, both Vulcan and the stranger worked tirelessly at their forges. Vulcan crafted a massive warhammer, while the stranger forged a sharp sword. They ascended Mount Deathfire, home to the largest fire drakes, the most formidable of Nocturne salamanders. Vulcan found his prey first, killing it with a single blow, however, as he made his way back down the mountain, the volcano erupted, nearly throwing him off a cliff. Clinging to the edge with one hand and his prize in the other, Vulcan struggled for hours. At that critical moment, the stranger reappeared, carrying a salamander larger than Vulcan's. Instead of claiming victory, the stranger sacrificed his own prize, using its heat-resistant hide to create a bridge across the lava flow, saving Vulcan's life. When they returned, Vulcan was declared the winner, but he silenced the crowd. Kneeling before the stranger, he declared that any man who valued life over pride was worthy of his service. The stranger then revealed himself to be the emperor of mankind. With this revelation, Vulcan took his place as the Primarch of the 18th Legion and the ruler of Nocturne. Despite his reluctance to leave his people undefended, the Emperor reassured him that Nocturne, as the home of a Primarch, would always be protected by his sons, the Salamander's Legion, who carried his blood and legacy. Vulcan did not immediately join his Legion after being discovered by the Emperor. Instead, he remained with the Emperor hidden from the wider Imperium though known to his brother Primarchs. During this time, Vulcan rapidly mastered the arts of war, history and science. His intelligence was fierce and he exhibited wisdom and compassion, traits that contrasted with the brutal role of a Primarch. Vulcan fought alongside the Emperor, a towering warrior clad in emerald armor resembling the dragons of ancient Terran myth. He also studied in the forges of Mars and alongside his brother Ferus Manus. When the time came for Vulcan to lead the 18th Legion, it was during a dire crisis. The Legion, under Lord Commander Cassian Vaughn, was defending a cluster of colony worlds near the Taras Division against a massive work invasion. Outnumbered and isolated, the 18th held the line for nearly a year, sacrificing much to protect human lives. Their commander was gravely wounded and the Legion found itself trapped on the dead world of Antheim surrounded by orcs. Despite their dire situation, they refused to ask for help, determined to succeed or die trying. Learning of their plight, Vulcan acted swiftly. He arrived with 3,000 new recruits from Nocturne, new warships and weapons crafted to his exacting standards. The reinforcements struck the orcs like a thunderbolt, shattering the largest Spake Hulk and rallying the beleaguered legion. Inspired, the 18th fought with renewed fury, breaking the orc horde and driving them from the system. After the battle, the Terran-born legionaries met their Nocturne brothers for the first time. When they saw their Primarch, they knelt before him, but Vulcan bid them rise, declaring all his sons as equals. He honored their sacrifices and symbolically transferred leadership from the mortally wounded Vaughn by presenting him with the broken power claw of the orc warlord who had struck him down. Vulcan then set about reforging his legion, preserving their honor, bravery, and spirit of sacrifice, but instilling greater discipline and wisdom in battle. He gathered the legion's scattered forces, built a fortress on Nocturne's moon, Prometheus, and drew on both the teachings of the Emperor and the traditions of Nocturne to unite them. The experience of the Terran veterans was valued, and their past heraldry was incorporated into the new Salamander's identity. Vulcan also created the Pyre Guard, an elite body of chapter masters and crafted a unique dreadnought sarcophagus for Vaughn, allowing him to continue serving as the castellan of Prometheus. Renamed the Salamanders after the powerful, fire-blooded reptiles of Nocturne, the 18th Legion became a force of discipline, purpose and restrained fury. Though never as large as some of the other legions, their prowess in battle was unmatched, tempered by Vulcan, they became known for their stoicism, careful planning, and unyielding resolve. When they unleashed their wrath, it was as unstoppable as the volcanic fury of their homeworld. Through Vulcan's leadership, the Salamanders learned the value of temperance and reflection, understanding that discipline in war could save lives. 
His vision shaped them into a formidable and honorable force within the Imperium, guided by the principles of wisdom and strength. The Salamanders, under their Primarch Vulcan, played a critical role during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, facing both external and internal threats with resilience and unwavering loyalty to the Emperor. Their involvement in the Imperial Compliance action on Caldera is one of the most notable early campaigns. In this mission, they worked alongside the Iron Hands and Dead Guard Legions to bring the world, known as Ibsen, to compliance with the Imperium. Despite its harsh conditions, Ibsen held valuable resources, but the Salamanders faced unexpected resistance from the Elder, who were defending a network of psychic nodes. Led by Vulcan, the Salamanders swiftly defeated the Elder, only to uncover a complex situation involving the indigenous human population, who viewed the Elder as their liberators from Dark Elder oppression. A mysterious remembrancer guided Vulcan to a significant discovery, a webway portal beneath an ancient arch, linked to the Dark Elder Raids. Recognizing the threat, Vulcan purged the planet, renaming it Caldera, and prepared it for Imperial colonization. The aftermath of this mission marked a growing tension between Vulcan and some of his Primarch brothers, foreshadowing events to come. Hey there Warhammer fans, if you are enjoying this story of Vulcan, make sure to smash that like button and share this video with your battle brothers and sisters. It really helps the channel grow and keeps the lore coming. Later, during the Karaatan campaign, Vulcan's sense of justice clashed with Conrad Curse of the Night Lord. Curse's brutal tactics deeply troubled Vulcan, leading to a confrontation that would sow seeds of animosity between them. This conflict highlighted the growing divide among the Primarchs, a divide that would prove fateful during the Dropside Massacre on Isvan V. The Dropside Massacre was a turning point in the Horus Heresy. The Salamanders, alongside the Iron Hands and Raven Guard, formed part of the Loyalist forces tasked with confronting the traitorous Warmaster Horus. As they landed on Isvan V, the Salamanders were met with fierce resistance. Despite initial success in advancing against Horus's forces, the situation took a grim turn when the four legions supposed to reinforce them, the Iron Warriors, Alpha Legion, World Bearers and Night Lords, revealed their betrayal. The Loyalist forces were caught in a deadly crossfire. Vulcan's sense of betrayal and anger drove him to lead a desperate counterattack against the Iron Warriors, but the combined might of the traitor legions decimated the Loyalists. The Salamanders, known for their tenacity, were nearly annihilated. The massacre shattered the Loyalist forces, leaving only remnants of the Salamanders to continue the fight against the growing power of Horus and his allies. The horrors of Isvan V would haunt Vulcan and the survivors of the 18th Legion, further deepening the rift among the Primarchs and setting the stage for the brutal conflict that would engulf the galaxy. Vulcan's ordeal during the Horus Heresy is one of the most harrowing tales among the Primarchs. After surviving the orbital bombardment by the Iron Warriors and being captured by Conrad Curse, Vulcan was subjected to unimaginable tortures. The Night Hunter, reveling in his insanity, sought to break his brother in both body and spirit. However, Vulcan's nature as a perpetual rendered him effectively immortal, and despite Curse's relentless and increasingly gruesome attempts to kill him, Vulcan would regenerate every time. This only fueled Curse's fury as his efforts proved futile. Curse's torment went beyond mere physical violence. He sought to shatter the Vulcan's will through psychological trials, forcing him to endure situations where he was powerless to save innocence or compelled to act against his own principles. Yet, despite all this, Vulcan's spirit remained unbroken, driven by his indomitable resolve and the fate he placed in the Emperor. Eventually, Curse, frustrated by his inability to permanently rid himself of Vulcan, devised a final challenge, a labyrinth designed by Perturabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors. This maze was a nightmarish construction defying logic and meant to trap its victims indefinitely, but with renewed resolve, Vulcan overcame both the physical and mental challenges of the labyrinth and faced Curse in a final duel. In the end, Vulcan escaped the Night Lord's Gaul Hulk using his Warhammer, Downbringer, which had a built-in teleporter. Though his escape was successful, it left him physically and mentally scarred. His violent re-entry into McCrage's surface and the subsequent events that followed, involving his encounter with Curse again, 
brought his saga to a tragic climax, stead with Fulgurit by John Grammaticus, Vulcan's fate seemed sealed once more, though the mystery surrounding his immortality left his ultimate fate uncertain. This account highlights not just Vulcan's incredible resilience, but also the tragic burden of his immortality, as he is forced to endure suffering beyond what any mortal could bear, all while remaining true to his noble spirit. The tale of Vulcan's miraculous return to life is a testament to both the fate of his legion and the indomitable spirit of the Primarch himself. Vulcan's body was eventually entombed on Macrage, the capital of Imperium Secundus. The salamanders, broken and grieving, believed their Primarch to be dead, his body resting in a golden casket prepared by Robert Gulliman. Yet, for all their sorrow, the spark of hope remained alive, especially in the heart of Artelus Numeon, the first captain of the salamanders. His unwavering belief that Vulcan lives became a rallying cry for the remnants of the 18th Legion. Numion's fate was rewarded when Vulcan's body mysteriously vanished from his own casket, only to be found later in a statuary garden, leading many to believe that the Primarch's Warhammer, Downbringer, had malfunctioned and teleported him there. This strange occurrence strengthened Numion's conviction, and he and the surviving salamanders, now calling themselves the Pyre, set out on a perilous journey to return Vulcan's body to their homeworld of Nocturne. This voyage aboard the battle barge Charybdis was fraught with danger as the forces of chaos relentlessly pursued them, yet through sheer determination and sacrifice, the Pyre managed to reach Nocturne. In a final desperate act, the Charybdis sacrificed itself to allow the salamanders to land on their homeworld with Vulcan's body. Even after a crash landing and a fierce battle with the Death Guard, the salamanders succeeded in bringing their Primarch to Mount Deathfire, where he was given a funeral according to the rituals of the Promethean cult. Despite the solemn ceremony, Numion's fate did not waver. He believed that his Primarch would still return, and in an act of ultimate devotion, Numion sacrificed himself in the fires of Mount Deathfire, hoping to trade his life for Vulcan's. In a miraculous turn of events, Vulcan did indeed rise again, found by his loyal brothers with the fulgurate spear still embedded in his chest, alive and whole once more. The return of Vulcan not only vindicated Numion's fate, but also revitalized the Salamander's legion. From the ashes of defeat and loss, the Salamanders would rise again, led by their immortal Primarch, proving once and for all that Vulcan lives. Thanks for joining me on this epic journey through the life of Primarch Vulcan. If you enjoyed diving into the lore, don't forget to hit that like button, share the video with fellow Warhammer enthusiasts, and subscribe for more fantastic content. Want to continue the discussion and dive even deeper into the 41st millennium? Join our Discord community and connect with other fans of the grimdark future. The link is in the description below. Until next time, stay fiery and may the Emperor's light guide you.